We ring here at the Holy Rosary Cathedral and have done so for over 100 years. Not me personally, but, <laughs> but we um, have consistently provided a band for the cathedral. The band members ourselves are a, an eclectic group. We're not all members of the diocese. We're not all Catholic here. It makes it a very interesting activity because we spend time together, not only ringing, but we socialize afterwards. And that's a big part of bell ringing for most people is that it's a very social activity. I walked into this literally. I walked past the tower and I looked up, listening to the bells, and I could see ropes moving in the windows, and I could see every so often hands appearing, and I thought, there are people ringing those bells. I gotta look into this. And I contacted the cathedral, and they put me in touch with Eve Munns, who is our tower captain, and she invited me to come to a practice, Tuesday night practice. And I came and watched and was transfixed, and the experience of being in here with the bells ringing was quite amazing to me. And then they said, well, do you want to have a poll? Um, it's the history, the background of it, even the history of bells and bell making and how that all came into Europe from China. It just, it's, it's a fascinating field, the whole thing. There's a certain level of danger involved in bell ringing because you are swinging a lot of weight. Our largest bell here weighs as much as a Volkswagen Beetle. And while it doesn't require muscle to ring these bells, it does require finesse and rhythm and being mindful of how well you're handling your bell. There are two strokes to bell ringing. There's the hand stroke, which involves pulling this part of the rope, which is called the sally, which is wool that has been woven into the hemp fibers so that you have a nice bulky piece to, to grip, which isn't too coarse. And you have the tail end or tail stroke or back stroke. So your hand is gripping, your hands are together, the tail end is through your thumb and held in, held in place by your thumb and you never let go of this. You never let go of your rope. Letting go of your rope is like setting off a bomb in a tower. <laughs> so pulling off, this is the hand stroke. And that's the tail stroke. So hand stroke, as my hands pass my face, the bell would sound going up. So on the tail stroke, I would hear bong, and the tip, bong. So hand stroke, I don't hear anything until now. Tail stroke, I don't hear anything until now. We have bilingual bells. Our front five are cast in England and our back three are cast in France from an original set of seven that were cast in France. The original seven didn't sound very pleasing to the ear and they needed to have a different range of notes so that you would get a better sound when the bells all rang together. And they ring in orders and orders that change and that's why it's called change ringing. With eight bells you can ring and change the order of the bells without ever repeating the order of the bells over 5,000 times. And that's what is called a peel. I found out about change ringing when I was about 15 years old and I read a copy of my mom's The Nine Tailors by Dorothy L. Sayers in which the change ringing was a part of a murder mystery plot. Um, I, at the time I didn't understand what was going on. I couldn't equate the numbers with the bells. So when I moved to Vancouver, I thought, this is my chance to, to learn how this actually works. So I, I came up to the tower and, uh, and started ringing with this band. All the members of the band are very friendly. They're always willing to teach. And there's always new people coming in. So I, I don't feel out of place. The best part about change ringing is that there is always something to learn. There's new methods to work on. You can always improve your technique, your bell handling. I like feeling how my confidence increases every time I come to a practice. It's a, it's a very satisfying activity. Well, I got started in change ringing uh, just about three weeks ago, and a friend invited me. Change ringing uh, not only tests the mind, but it does test a lot of your body's uh, ability to control and to deal with uh, controlling a 1,800-pound bell, which is hovering right above your head, so dealing with the nerves is one thing. Then there's making sure you stay on time, do the method correctly. And then lastly, just the actual physical control of the bell. I would most certainly encourage younger um, people to join the team. Um, nowadays, uh, there's a lot of information on the internet and more and more people sort of resort to their phones or to uh, other forms of media. Um, in change ringing, it's all sort of um, very verbal, and you're talking a lot to older people, people who have a lot of experience both in bell ringing but in life. So getting to sort of experience such a unique art alongside people with so much experience and so much knowledge 
It's an absolutely incredible thing. 